All right, as promised, got the truck together, and I'll show you guys what we did. So, we now have a Speed Speed T3 divided exhaust manifold. It's going into a custom 6466 ball bearing turbo with a 8382 T3 divided oxide. Then it goes into a Banks. Uh, oh shit, I forgot I didn't have this off. <laughs> I was going to show you guys down there. I just put the cowling back on. But it goes into a Banks uh, exhaust brake here. So, pretty basic. Aiming to be like a California spec vehicle. Uh, right away, the EGT is an idle, even though this probe is you know, as hot as it really can be in the depth that it's at. EGT is idle, went for about 375, 350 ish on the original manifold and the original turbo to about 215. I'll show you guys that right now. So, 250 and we're warming up. Now, the exhaust brake is not finished. So I haven't done any of the plumbing, the solenoid, the adapter right here. We're gonna do all that when I do the fuel system. I'm gonna drop out that, put in the fast fuel system. Uh, but it's a little cold, but I'll show you guys how it revs. And I decided to go with a non waste gated configuration because being that we have a larger turbine wheel and this fifth wheel right here, um, it really won't probably make more than maybe 38 pounds on waste gated. And let's see. So you can hear an inherent lag. The lag is because normally a waste gate would be opening up and using up, or rather diminishing, throwing away away the exhaust energy that's being created so what we have here is so that delay there that's because it's still having to consume the engine still consuming all the air that the turbo is now taken from the exhaust wheels spun up and now forced in um, to the engine so that's why it is kind of doing a rev hang sort of thing that. So that's totally normal when you have a non waste gated turbo setup. Um, just the, the temperatures when you're cruising were probably two to three hundred degrees lower. Um, when we were going to uh, like get higher load stuff, so I was going through the gears as aggressively as this truck can handle. And the peak EGT that I had was I think 1180 something like 1180 so really 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 cooled off the truck we're talking 220 degrees easily cooler than it used to be um, and it's that's all due to a very good exhaust manifold design and obviously we have more exhaust restriction from the brake here so that means that the turbine and the turbine housing are doing more work so just wanted to show you guys an update on that. Um, I ended up, there's water lines right back he <clears throat> here and one right here. And so when we go to do the fleece performance uh, water relocation kit, the pipe that comes on that has a dash six and a dash six right here. So that on that new pipe, we're just gonna install these fittings and the cool uh, center housing will now have water directly off the motor. So just try to do something a little bit smart there with the ball bearing. Uh, response, of course, going from a, I think it's like a 58 or a 60 millimeter compressor and a 58 turbine going to a 66. The response, of course, is not going to hit with as much torque. That's just guaranteed. We know that's not going to happen, but this thing where it is even driving unloaded okay no trailer nothing we're getting into full boost with no surge at like 1700 rpm 
and then the way that the stock charger would fall down uh, right at like 2100, 2200, and just start pumping more and more heat into the system. This thing really, really catches legs over 2200, and then from there to Redline and beyond is wicked up. So this makes way more sense when we go to finish the transmission that when we're going towing at highway speeds will be at 2100 RPM it is ready to roll when we need it. Um, and then when it is, of course, loaded, it's gonna generate more boost than when it is unloaded. And so it should make probably 150 more horsepower at just standard cruising at that thing, as well as dropping temps 200 degrees in EGT, which is like huge. And then we need to get out of trouble and downshifts Let's say you're going from fourth to third on the 48 RE. Well, now when it goes to downshift, it's not blasting it with, you know, 1500 degree EGTs, and then the thing doesn't go anywhere because it doesn't make any power at all. What it'll do instead is it makes a boatload more power up there now, doesn't pour any heat into the system, and it should just take off as a downshift normally should. So, really happy with how things are working out so far. Um, we're going to go through and kind of restore everything small. Uh, obviously, it's a low mileage truck, but I've got new uh, new hoses for everything and um, got a new wiper motor thing. But yeah, it's, it's really coming together how I think it should have been. And the truck is definitely working as a modern workhorse because it's pretty decent sized trailer so um i'm excited to kind of get some towing videos for you guys and show you what's going on but ball bearing baby that's the way to go so really really excited to show this off soon and uh i'll definitely catch you guys in the next one sorry for the lighting there we go but uh great truck excited to go drive a little more and uh get some mileage on there